Hey, what's going on guys? Nick Heron here with the Fantasy Football Swagger Show. And today, guys, what I'm going to be talking about are five of my favorite sleeper running backs for the 2015 NFL season. Now, this is a list that I just put together based on their average draft position. It's not necessarily the order that I like them in or anything like that. It just has to do with where their current average draft position is. So we're going to go from the highest drafted player to the lowest drafted player on this list. But these guys are all players who I believe can give you good value in your draft. Players who you shouldn't necessarily reach on, but given the fact that they're going around other players that maybe I don't think as highly of, I kind of like these guys as players who you can you know, get for a good value and still get great production out of. So let's go into the top five list here, guys. At the first spot, we have Chris Ivory of the New York Jets. Now, Chris Ivory had an off and on season this past year, uh, competing with carries for uh, with Chris Johnson, so that made it pretty tough, but he is going at the end of the fourth round right now in 12-team leagues. And in standard scoring formats, I like Chris Ivory a little bit more. But you know what? This guy is a guy who really doesn't have much competition in the Jets' offense right now for touches. And I think that's going to be a big asset to have here in the fantasy season. He's one of those guys who should get the majority of touches out of the backfield. And because of that, he's going to give you fairly consistent value. Now, given the fact that he's going at the end of the fourth round, you kind of got to consider, you know, exactly what his value is to your specific team. You know, if, he, if he's a guy who's going to be your RB2, you might want to consider, you know, getting another running back here in the later rounds just to make sure that you've got somebody that, uh, in case Ivory does flop, but at the same time, though, again, I believe that given his ADP of a bottom end of the fourth round, high end of the first, fifth round in a lot of leagues, and I've seen him actually fall to the sixth and even the seventh round in some drafts that I've done. I mean, if you can get him late like that, I mean, this guy's going to give you way better value than other players that you're selecting around that range. I'm telling you, he's going to put up quality numbers this year. The Jets offense is bad. Fair enough. I get it. He's going to have those games where he's off, but he should touch the ball 15 times a game, and that's pretty tough to come by in the NFL today. Moving on, we're moving down to number two, David Cobb of the Tennessee Titans. Now, this guy is a rookie running back. He's competing with Bishop Sankey, who was very ineffective this past year. He was not good at all. And I think that David Cobb is the kind of guy, just watching some short tape of him, I think he's the kind of guy that could take this job. Now, I'm not going to say that he's going to go out there and be the lead dog throughout the entire year. And at the beginning of the season, it's almost certainly going to be a 50-50 split at best for Cobb. Um, I, would, I would actually not be surprised if it's 60-40, 65-35 in favor of Sankey to start the season. But by the end of the year, I I think that we're going to see Bishop Sankey really isn't anything special. David Cobb's going to give you a little bit more out of that Tennessee backfield. And with Marcus Mariota being there, we could see some read option type stuff. We could see some interesting type of play calling there with the Titans. And that could fit right into David Cobb being a sleeper and putting up decent numbers here. He's going at the end of the eighth round right now. So I think that's tremendous value. He's going behind Bishop Sankey in most leagues. So you got to consider the fact that the upside with David Cobb, in my personal opinion, is much higher than Bishop Sankey right now. So that's why I would actually take him above Bishop Sankey, despite the fact that he's lower than him currently on the depth chart. Moving on to Duke Johnson of the Cleveland Browns. Now, Duke Johnson going around the same range as David Cobb. He's actually going at the beginning of the ninth round, so their, their ADP is very, very close to one another. I like both of these players on their respective rosters. They're both very young, and they're both on teams where the running backs ahead of them on the depth chart just haven't really done much. Terrence West and Isaiah Crowell did not really show us anything spectacular on film this past season. And to be honest with you, Duke Johnson's a guy who, despite the fact that he suffered some injuries here, in the preseason, he's actually moving up draft boards because the other guys on the roster just aren't doing anything. And it's kind of interesting. A guy not playing is actually moving up the depth chart, uh, moving up the, the fantasy boards at least. I don't know if he's moving up the depth chart there in Cleveland. But I, we've just like with Bishop Sankey before, I just don't see many situations where Isaiah Crowell and Terrence West are going to go out there and put up monster numbers or anything like that. So I think Duke Johnson is going to have his opportunity at some point during the season. And given the fact that he's going in the ninth round, I definitely think he's a guy that you should take a look at in those later rounds as a guy who could potentially help you down the road this season. Next on the list, we've got Devonta Freeman, who's going at the end of the ninth round right now. Devonta Freeman is a guy who uh, does have some competition there in Atlanta, but the truth is, is that this guy has some PPR value. Last year, he did not start a single game, but still caught 30 passes. Now, I understand 30 is not anything amazing, but Atlanta is an offense that is going to move the ball. And if he can win that job there in Atlanta, that's all that he really needs to do. If he can win the job and get the majority of the touches there, this guy is going to give you way better value than somebody who 
who's getting drafted at the end of the ninth round normally would. So I'm a big fan of that. I mean, obviously, like I said, there is competition there with the rookie, but you know what? Devonta Freeman just hasn't really had that opportunity yet to really get out there and show what he's worth. So I, I still think that he's going to end up being the lead dog there this season. It might change down the road depending on you know what he does, but I think for this season, he is the guy that I'm really looking at and I'm really targeting here at the end of the ninth round, particularly in PPR leagues, because I think he's going to get more playing time, and I don't see any reason why he doesn't catch 35, 40, 45 passes this season. And if you're getting that at the end of the ninth round, that's pretty nice. That's pretty consistent value, and that's something that we can definitely look forward to as a flex or even a low-end RB2, RB3, depending on how your league is formatted. So let's go to the final guy on this list, our fifth player. And again, these aren't ranked by any sort of you know measurable other than ADP. Matt Jones of the Washington Redskins. Now, this is a guy, I, and again, you guys are seeing pretty much everybody on this list other than Chris Ivory is a young running back, and that's because we're looking for upside, okay? We're looking for guys, not the boring guys, other than Chris Ivory, I would consider him to be kind of boring, but I just think his... his uh, job is so secure there in New York. But other than him, all the other guys on this list are currently behind the player in front of them on the depth chart on the running back position. And the, the reality is they're probably going to need some sort of either faltering from the guy in front of them, an injury, or you know just not playing well for them to get much of an opportunity. But Matt Jones from the Washington Redskins behind Alfred Morris right now, he's going in the 13th round, which means he's going undrafted in a lot of leagues. And the reality is, is that this guy does have some potential value here in this Washington system. I'm not sure that he's necessarily the most athletic guy. I'm not sure that he's going to be a PPR monster or anything like that. But when you watch this guy, you see him run. And we've seen it in the preseason. He runs like it's just... He's like a freight train out there. It's insane. The guy has got some serious power to his running game, and that is something that we don't really see that often out of guys who are first coming into the league. That's something that typically these guys that just aren't very athletic to begin with, they might add on some weight, and then they might change their running style. Matt Jones already has that running style coming out of college. He's going to pound the rock, and that could be something to watch out for in Washington. This is a guy who could potentially take over some goal line work for Alfred Morris. Not saying that Alfred Morris is a bad goal line player, or anything like that, but if you've got a guy like Matt Jones who can go in there and be almost a guarantee to pick up the one yard by just going straight forward and smashing into the defense, that is something that a lot of offenses are going to be looking for and in the NFL, and I think Washington is particularly going to need that type of running game, given the fact that their quarterback situation is just in complete disarray right now. I think Washington's going to have to rely on the run a lot this year, and Alfred Morris, yes, is going to be the lead dog. I don't think there's any question about that. We're not talking about Matt Jones competing for the starting job unless Alfred Morris does go out, obviously, and then Matt Jones, I think, would become a very valuable fantasy asset. But just keep an eye on this guy, especially in your dynasty leagues. I think Matt Jones is somebody that could potentially be a decent player down the road. Alfred Morris's contract situation is something to watch out for. If he's not going to be a player on the Redskins for a long for the long run, it's very possible that Matt Jones could potentially take over this job in the next year or two. Uh, so be on the lookout for that type of stuff, guys. Those are the kind of guys that you really want to target at the end of your draft, guys who could potentially take over the job and still be a very valuable fantasy asset. So there you have it, guys. That is my top five sleeper running back position. I think that, uh, like I said, a lot of these guys are players that are being very, very undervalued right now and guys that could potentially help you down the road here later in your fantasy season. So with that being said, guys, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, do me a favor, hit that like button. Of course, subscribe to the channel if you are new. And let me know if you guys have any other suggestions or any other questions in the comments section below. I'd be glad to hear from you guys. So thanks again. Enjoy that the next episode when we're going to be putting out our quarterbacks, our wide receivers, our tight end sleepers. Thank you guys again, and I'll talk to you next time here on the Fantasy Football Swagger Show.